This video brought to you by our Patreons. Please consider supporting this channel and joining our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash NovaWing24. Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your once up location for your simulation and release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 28th of June for another exciting episode and once again I hope this episode finds you safe and well and enjoying the flight simulation world. Interesting as a side note as well that uh, summer is of course uh, upon us, well upon, well not upon me, but upon those of, uh, those of you in the northern hemisphere and of course that comes to with uh, the sales times as well. So not a lot of new releases this week, there are a few um, but uh, yeah notably uh, smaller in the reviews this week. But nevertheless, there were some new releases, so let's get on with those ones. So the first one comes to us for the X-Plane 11 universe, uh, with Aerobasque releasing their latest aircraft with their rendition of the Lancair Legacy retractable gear. Now, I'm going to start by saying I love this aeroplane so much. I, I really, I really do. So for on the on the ESP side of the house, I use uh, real. I purchased real real air's Lancair Legacy. Like was I think the first. I think it was the first or second piece of payware that I ever, second piece of payware that I ever picked up. And I love that aircraft so much. So it's really awesome for you to see to see a beautiful, highly detailed rendition make its way onto the X plane universe. Now this rendition uh, from Aerobus um, uh, comes to us with a highly detailed 3D model of internally and externally, uh, highly detailed and accurate in 3D model. Uh, also supports full set of 4K textures both internally and externally with a full support for PBR texturing as well. A high quality custom FMOD sound set including a full um, uh, sound set of the Continental IO 550 engine as well uh, and all of these based on a real of, of recordings from a real Lancasy, uh, from a real Lancair legacy as well. Uh, highly accurate flight model tested against real pilot experiences uh, for, from uh, by X Aerodynamics and uh, includes full support for the native um, uh, GNS 530 but also supports natively Reality XP's GTN 750 as well if you do have it. Uh, for those of you who are VR, VR pilots it's all fully optimized for VR as well. It has a variety of custom coded avionics including custom coded Avidyne uh, uh, EFIS and JP Instruments VM 1000C, um, AOA Pro Angle of Attack Indicators, Apollo S70 Transponder and Aerospace Logical Digital Clock. Didn't know that that needed custom coding, but at least we know it's there. Uh, it also is, uh, again, like we're seeing a lot with a lot of these sort of highly accurate uh, renditions that come out here, this has a full custom simulation of the Continental engine as well, including separate combustion prop starters modeling as well uh, to go with the custom sound set that goes with it as well. Uh, it also has full oxygen system modeling as well, so if you don't plug, uh, connect your oxygen system and you go above uh, 10, 10 or 12,000 feet, you will run out of oxygen. Uh, so yeah, and, and it also supports full support for the custom uh, experimental flight model and dynamic airflow effects um, it, it do affect the airframe uh, and uh, the airframe stress, as well as also affecting the cockpit and the cockpit and the canopy behavior, which is really kind of cool. I really like that. Uh, so this uh, add-on, if you wanted to add this awesome little GA aircraft to your fleet, you can pick this one up for $35 US or your original equivalent, available now from xplane.org. In another aircraft release for the X-Plane 11 world this week, saw the guys over at JRX Designs release uh, their Gazelle pack this week. So they released the uh, SA341 Bravo and Juliet models. So the Bravo was, of course, one of the, uh, the, the first models of the Gazelle and is a military variant and is um, modelled as it would appear in around about the sort of, uh, it so looks like it appears around about the 1980s or so, so it's designed more around a steam gauge, so very much the more basic uh, systems with there. Um, has a full uh, a full modelling of all said systems, um, but yeah, it's more of the old school avionics rather than your modern glass cockpit kind of style. The civilian variant, the Juliet variant, is a more modern avionics uh, uh, suite and also includes an upgraded engine as well and a different um, uh, external model as well, as well as custom avionics based on Garmin and Avidyne uh, instrumentation as well, as well as full support for pop-out tablets for various services and instruments as well. Uh, you get a slew of different liveries for this one as well, including 17 for the military version and 19 for the civilian version. Both models share highly detailed uh, 3D, accurate 3D models uh, based on their various different models. 
all textures are fully both internally and externally support PBR as well as well as all textures being 4k textures as well um, all of the instrumentation for both variants are custom coded instrumentations none of it is stock standard explained instrumentation which is really interesting and also that's a huge amount of coding burden that went on the developers there so that's cool uh, also includes animated tie rotor tie downs engine pedo covers as well includes custom engine vib vibration modeling as well animated friction locks for both the cycling and collective and a variety of other helicopter specific content as well uh, as I said dynamic lighting support as well and dynamic aircraft ID plate based on the livery as well uh, also across a variety of other things implementations in there including the fuel and equipment and weight if the uh, aircraft is all dynamically affected in real time uh, so for example you can uh, strip the doors off the helicopter which means it will actually and that will reduce the weight as well of the aircraft dynamically which is kind of cool uh, same with fuel weight as well all dynamically supporting that as well as pilot copass co-pilot co-pilot and passengers models all also with their own dynamic weighting as well uh, interesting note as well is that the military versions uh, do support munitions however they are inert apparently so I assume that means you can't make anything go bang with them um, but you know maybe somebody out there could modify it to make them go bang I don't know because it does support dynamic weight and dynamic modeling which is kind of cool uh, also su full support for sling loading as well from the cockpit as well with no third party plugin provided uh, it required or supplied directly to the sim uh, flight model has been uh, uh, updated to, uh, sorry has been updated has been modeled uh, based off real world pilot exp uh, feedback and designed to operate under the a new experimental x -plane flight model as well and has actually been verified against the current 11.5 beta program and fully compatible with Vulcan as well so this awesome helicopter duo is available for a awesome price as well from JRX designed for 30 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now from xplane.org in another xplane 11 release this time from new studio boundless uh, studios uh, so which is only, which only formed this year and uh, to bring uh, new affordable scenery to everybody uh, so this one is their first product which is their rendition of uh, Ronald's Ronald's Way Airport on the Isle of Man. So this uh, small little regional airport is uh, serviced by a variety of uh, small airline uh, small airlines. Uh, providing turboprop uh, con uh, content as well as full support for GA aviation as well. Now this airport is uh, is modelled as it appears at, during at the start of 2020, including all accurate taxiway, runway, and apron networks have, have been modelled, including also all signage has been modelled, all airport buildings have been done, uh, all in full HD and accurate 3D models with full support for PBR texturing um, and reflective textures on all buildings and ground textures as well as well as full support for night lighting and a variety of static aircraft as well, while still being fully compatible with global traffic and various tra other traffic add-ons as well. Now, this particular model, it's uh, this particular release is just for the airport and doesn't include any of the surrounds of the area. However, uh, develop, the developer Boundless has confirmed that they are uh, releasing a full custom um, scenery package, which will be for the whole of the Isle of Man, and that is currently in development and on track for release later this year. So, uh, we can assume that as it's coming from the same developer, that it would be designed, optimized to blend seamlessly in with that. But in the meantime, if you do want to pick up the airport, you can pick it up now for about 19 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from your favorite flight sim retailer. Continuing on with other X Plane releases and other scenery release. So this time, uh, a, this is a freeware release, this one by developer Poopy and I. I, I kid you not, that is his handle. Uh, he, has, he has rebooted his Heli Alps scenery released a few years ago. Uh, so this update is a full HD overhaul of this one, including updating it to with additional uh, helicopter landing sites. Essentially, the whole premise of this uh, add-on was to give uh, frantic palm tree flyers something else to, you know, some cool and challenging places, some cool and challenging things to do uh, in the beauty of these of the Swiss and French, of oh, sorry, of the French Alps. Um, now, this one, so originally it came out with uh, th about thirty um, various different landing places. Also came out with a variety of missions and scenarios to be able to use as well. Uh, that has now been expanded with additional. Uh, uh, landing zones including uh, the hospital at Grenoble as well as well as a variety of new missions have been included as well the other thing that's been done as well is that they've also added in uh, updated a lot of the models internal and a lot of the textures of many of the models and the clutter objects to be full support for HD and higher resolution
animation models and textures as well. Uh, they've also updated the spawn areas uh, for many of the uh, existing landing zones as well. So pretty cool, pretty amazing. And as I said, coming in for free, available now from the xplane.org repository. Sticking with X-Plane 11 and sticking with freeware releases, um, so developer Bruno Reichardt, operating under the Resceneries brand, has rebooted his previous release of Kagoshima International Airport for Japan for x 11 uh, by updating it and bringing it in line with its appearance in 2020. And now he's updated the photo reel, uh, the photo reel and the custom ground polygon that the airport sits on, as well as updating the airport layout and updating many of the details of the buildings as well. That's about all the information I could see. Otherwise, from the screenshots, this thing looks amazing and looks like it does support a full set of PBR texturing, uh, PBR texturing and 4K textures throughout from what I can tell from the screenshots. And again, this is available free available from explain.org available now moving out of the Xplane 11 world, moving into the world of the ESP platforms and moving to the guys at Orbix released their latest Norwegian airport this week uh, with a release of, uh, of oh, <laughs> almost read that wrong, uh, Alessund Vigra uh, Airport in Norway uh, from Norwegian developer Finn Hansen. Uh, so this release is for prepared v4 and a so for it, prepared for you 4 and V5. Uh, and it's a major Norwegian airport uh, for, again, like a lot of the airports have been modeled lately, su supporting uh, low cost and charter carriers more than their legacy ones as well. Um, it, is, uh, it is a very sort of uh, welcoming airport for various, various different aircraft, but they are primarily short haul uh, airliners. Those we are looking sort of like your, your smaller, more economical tube liners, like your 737s, your A320s, but also more, it's also very much home to uh, CRJs, ATRs and Dash eights as well. So uh, quite a different range for various different uh, airliner fans to come through here as well if you so desire. Uh, now this project has come through includes a complete de depiction of the airport as it appears in 2020 and also the surrounding islands for the area as well. So it's not just for the two liner parts, there's going to be a lot there for those of us doing low and slow flying as well. It's, it's a high detailed rendition of all of the airport, including all airport buildings, includes seven centimeter uh, per pixel resolution ground imagery for the airports, uh, while the rest of the uh, mini region that it has is uh, is 30 to 60 centimeter per pixel resolution imagery. Um, includes custom ground service equipment, boasted vehicles vehicles exclusive to the area, as well as a custom 10 meter terrain mesh and land and custom land class for the whole area as well. Includes a variety of points of interest for the area, including um, hand place autogen and uh, North Sea spool base, spool base and the Jiski Bridge as well as being a uh, great springboard to the other Norwegian destinations in there. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be that much of the, uh, although these points of interest are there, there doesn't see there seem to be any opportunities to sort of go through and grab any helicopter landing points around the area, which is a bit of a shame because considering you've got all these airports, so you've got the airport model and then you've got all the islands and the surrounding areas done as well, it could have been a really great opportunity to do a few other things there, but... Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but otherwise, as I said, looking down amazing, coming in for a pretty standard price from Orbix, coming in at about 24 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Orbix Direct. Continuing on with ESP releases and actually continuing on with prepared V4 exclusive, V4 and above exclusive releases, uh, the guys over at JustSim uh, have uh, produced their latest airport, their Hanover International Airport. Now, I swear we reported on this recently. I might be wrong. I thought maybe somebody else had to come up with something else. I can't remember. Anyway, um, so this airport is uh, so this airport is modelled as it appears at the start of 2020, uh, including uh, all airport buildings uh, have been modelled and, and the layer airport layer is accurately uh, completed. It includes full support for SODE jetways and visual docking guidance systems as well. Custom ground polygon, polygons have been done and custom uh, custom terrain mesh, including full support for PBR materials throughout the ground textures as well. All 3D models, all, all major 3D models of airport buildings now done in full PBR texturing as well, as well as high resolution ground textures and custom runway textures and all uh, various airport collateral done as well. Uh, also includes full support for dynamic dynamic lighting in the dark and uh, automatic season change for visit, vegetation and photo real terrain for the surrounding area as well. And uh, custom re glass reflections being modeled as well. Uh, this release, uh, although it's interesting, this one. So this one is officially uh, for 4.4, 4, uh, so 4.4 and above. Uh, and and uh, but there's mixed messaging about whether it supports a V5 or not. The video that they've released for it shows it in V5, but the release statement says it's, they can't guarantee it. So 
eh, I guess with V5 being as unstable as it is right now, I guess it's probably the only thing they can make. If you do want to pick this one up and add it to your collection, you're looking at paying about 27 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now from Sim Market. Moving away from the ESP platforms and moving into the world of DCS, and we saw a uh, interesting little freeware release come out this week, and this time it is for the, with the release of the AH-6J Little Bird uh, mod for DCS. Now, this one uh, is a bit of a okay. So, this is, but basically, it's the it's a it's a uh, uh, Hughes 500. Uh, it's an MD 500. Is basically what it is. It's the military version of it. Um, but what is really a, the, the biggest thing about this one is that there are other a couple of other sort of projects out there that make use of that have done there not haven't necessarily had a lot of success but there are a couple of other freeware projects out there that do helicopters for dcs world however they all required that you had the dcs's black shark module in order to be able to use the flight model from that one this is the first community made helicopter mod for dcs that doesn't require any other mod or any other um, module to be installed and purchased. So that's a huge deal. This is a fully custom coded, custom made from the ground up flight model, which is a huge deal for the community. That's really, really cool. Um, so this, the developer's done this as an, in his own words, as a open source project um, so that he really believes and would give into the community, which is awesome as well. I gotta say that, by the way. Um, so this is Nibilot, uh, is the developer that's come through for this one. And he's coming out now, he's, as I said, he's released it very basic at the moment. He chose the AH-6 to be, to be able to showcase that, um, you know, to be able to create the new flight model as a basis for, you know, for him and other developers to work on, but also because it is a very basic helicopter, as we've probably seen from my review of the of the MD-530. Uh, in terms of this one, it includes full support for the aircraft, uh, for the helicopter, it includes uh, working um, radar warning receivers, um, can control, you can control the aircraft from both seats. It does have a full working weapon system and a full support for cold starting with all fully clickable switches as well. Uh, it can use a M134 minigun and a variety of rockets as well with a basic damage model and basic multi-crew as well. Now, there is a lot of work to be done on from the flight model. It is not in the finished state yet. As I said, it's just a, this is a first initial public release here and it's just got one texture set at the moment, but there's a lot coming here and this is a huge step forward for the community for this one. If you are wanting to grab this one and test it out for yourself, as I said, this is a freeware project available now from the forums over at DCS. Moving away from the flight sim world for the moment and moving into the world of the permanent way. The guys have a train simulator. I saw the latest release this week of the Engarden line, um, Pontresnia uh, to Scholtars route. I am butchered that I have absolutely I absolutely know that so this is in the Swiss Alps this one so we were in the French Alps with helicopters earlier now we're in the Swiss Alps uh, with trains uh, so this is a line uh, this is developed by developer Rivet Games and is a 57 kilometer uh, Swiss railway uh, route uh, through the mountains uh, through a region th uh, that is literally known for the Engarden region is literally translates as Valley of the Inn People which to me is just an Awesome. It's, it, it always sounds elvish in, when you say it like that. But anyway, um, so it leads northeast through through the region, through up, upper and lower, and garden, and garden following the Inn River. And this first section um, is uh, in, incorporates a link between uh, Abula and Barina as well. Now, this route was originally built in uh, 1903 to 1913, um, but is this is a more modern representation of it as it is now. Now, this uh, route includes uh, 17 stations along the line, as well as a full implementation of a GE 6/62 locomotive available for you to experience. Now, this is, a, as I said, a 57 kilometre route, uh, route with full modelling of a GE 6-2 uh, train with EW4 passenger and SBT and ZA freight, freight cars included as well. Includes 17 highly detailed train stations uh, from a 2019 survey. Includes a full custom modelling of an RHB L-type signalling system uh, with a full support for animated brake test uh, operating. Um, I'm not even going to say what that indicator is, but it's something there. Uh, three state ground signals and a ZSI safety system as well and a variety of other things coming through as well. Custom bridge and tunnel portal models all designed to be accurately represent the, the um, architecture of the actual route as it appears in 2019. And along with along with this you get seven career scenarios and three rail fan mode scenarios all included. And this one comes out for the standard price of 
40 US dollars, our original equivalent, currently available for a bit of a uh, special as part of the Steam launch slash Steam summer sales for 32 US dollars or your original equivalent available now on Steam. And rounding out the simulation releases uh, for the week with an interesting little release from Aerosoft of the release this week of Truck and Logistics Simulator. Now, this release, I'm a little curious. This is perplexing, this release. So on the surface, this one looks like a... It, it basically looks like a takeoff of SES's uh, Euro Truck Simulator slash American Truck Simulator. That's what it looks like on the surface. Um, and I don't know whether it's any more than that, but there are a couple of unique things about this one. So the first one is is that it's not just about the big rigs. Like the big rigs definitely feature in here, um, but it's also about um, smaller things as well. So, you know, it's got the same basic idea, like similar to what uh, Truck Simulator has, which is, you know, you've got very similar vehicle, you know, vehicles, you've got cargo that you've got to get from point A to point B. Uh, it's a career mode, and you go through sort of you know upgrading your fleet and picking up you know new new bigger more you know important jobs and more valuable jobs and stuff like that, uh, and you build up your reputation and your experience to be the uh, to be a logistic you know, as a logistics operator. Um, and a variety of different cargoes. Some are some are big, some are oversized, some are fragile. Blah blah blah. Um, what's interesting about this one? Is, two major interesting things about this one is that there are a variety of different vehicles. So you can actually go all the way through from loading your truck with the forklift, or you can, or you have things like you know, or like you load a you know a ATV or a, uh, a a a van onto your big truck, drive the big truck, and then offload it, and then drive you around with the small van. You drive twenty unique different vehicles, each with their own driving physics model and interiors and exteriors and all the rest of it. Um, so, which is pretty cool. Like, that's pretty kind of awesome as well. Uh, the other interesting thing is that this is cross-platform, so this is available for both PC and Nintendo Switch, um, and you share the same like online world and you can interact with each other and form convoys and stuff like that. So you can be playing, so somebody can play on Twitch and they can be driving uh, next to someone who's driving on PC. That's kind of cool and awesome. Um, the, it's very, again, a lot of similarities with uh, Euro Truck Sim and, uh, and American Truck Sim with that you can customize a vehicle with paint, dashboards, colors, stuff like that. At the moment, it's all internal to the Sim. You don't have to buy it. There's no extra DLC at the moment, but it says it's just been released. Um, however, here's where I have a bit of a concern slash issue slash not really sure what's going on. As I said, this has been dual released this week on both Nintendo Switch and on um, PC via Steam. Um, the PC version has been released into early access on Steam, uh, coming in at standard price for 20 bucks on a launch special of 15 bucks US. The Switch version is not an early access version, it's a full release. Um, well, at least it's marketed, it's tagged as a full release, it's not marketed as early access or anything like that, and it's coming in at 40 bucks. Um, I'm a little bit. I, I don't know what to make of the disconnect of the of the pricing and the platforms there. I'm, I do find it interesting um, why they've done it that way. I would have thought that the PC version would have been more expensive because at the end of the day, the PC one is probably going to have high graphics requirements, even if it's using the same engine. It's probably going to have higher bandwidth and overhead and stuff like that. So it's interesting that the Switch version is more, and the Switch version is also also not tagged as early access, even though they are sharing the same environment. So theoretically, they should both be complete. So somebody's somebody's missing out somewhere, and I want to know who. So I just want to point out that, as I said, um, as I said, the price point being so significantly different is interesting uh, for a start. And then, as I said, early access for PC, but full release for Switch, even though they're the same sim with a shared world. A little odd. So not sure what to make of that. But if you want to pick up either of those versions, uh, you can pick them up directly from Aerosoft, uh, Aerosoft.com, or from if you're on the PC, you can pick it up on the on Steam and for the Switch, wherever your Switch products are available, available now. And as I said, that does, it does now round out the Nova app for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, for those who may have noticed over the last few weeks, I've been promoting myself that I was streaming on Mixer. Last week, obviously, Microsoft decided to can mixer um so that leaves us with a bit of a um 
what do we do now? Uh, essentially, uh, what is is I am uh, after thinking about it for most of last for last week uh, for the last few days, I have decided that I will be moving to Twitch. Um, so keep an eye out on Tuesdays and Thursdays at ten thirty Zulu. Um, I will be planning on hosting my first stream over on the new platform on Twitch this week. Hopefully, if all things go right with technology, uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys there and coming coming in and share some fun times as we go traveling around Australia delivering some cargo. All right. Otherwise, folks, thanks very much for thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And if you do want to support me and the work that I do here and uh, on the channel and or even over on Twitch now, uh, please consider supporting the channel um, um, over on patreoncom forward slash twenty four for some cool exclusives there as well. Otherwise, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.